So we are Tech Pod Venture Entertainment. We want to talk about Beyonce. Last time I talked about Beyonce was episode one. No, nah, it was episode two actually. It's episode two. We was in Miami. We was in Miami. We was in Miami. Right. But she dropped uh, Cowboy, Cowboy Carter. Carter. Mm-hmm. Have Still, you heard it? I have not heard it yet. <laughs> How you? I'm late. I'm late on album. When it come out, give me a week. Give me a week. Madly, me a week. like. Has anybody heard it? You heard it? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's your favorite song? Okay. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Right now. It could change. Tomorrow. Okay. Every other yeah, that album. What's that first song on the album? Bodyguard. Okay. He got <laughs> Bodyguard and Jolene. Jolene right, was good too. Jolene. Jolene was good too. I heard 16. What's the 16 carriages? Yeah, but that's, that's that was the single? Okay. Yeah, I like the song Bodyguard. Um, I just like how she's like, one, I like how she marketed it because everybody thought she was going to just go, um, super country, like she did, but like Which caused I, controversy exactly before it, even came out. It, before it even came out. That's good marketing. Um, and then, um, but she just showed that, like, no, like this is a Beyonce album. Like I'm versatile. Like I could do whatever is asked. Like if you want me to go country, I could do it. If you want me to rap, look, people forget. Like yo, she, she was bodying Jay Z on the Carter's album. Go yeah. listen to that album. She was bodying Jay Z on a couple of verses. Like she really was doing her thing. Like don't get it twisted. She's she could do whatever is. Asked, you know what I mean? So exactly, like don't don't get it twisted. She definitely has um some good. She's we all know Beyonce's a performer. Beyonce's talented, but I think with this, she's just kind of solidifying like you know exactly like she is the genre. Like you know what I'm saying? It's not it's not uh, country R and B. No, it's Beyonce. It's Beyonce. <laughs> it's Beyonce. Like no, seriously, because she's doing she could do whatever and has been doing whatever. So while Has we're talking been about Beyonce, that. her album's so big that tech forums are talking about her. Like they they were talking about her in the sense that this this album was her stance against like AI. There's a couple of generative AI tools that came out, like uh, Stability I think is one, and a couple others where they m- can mimic your voice, different things, they what? generate music. Obviously the music industry's rollout of the the fake artists last year or what, two years ago was, was bad. But it's gonna come back. They're gonna try again. Mm-hmm. They're gonna try to do it again. But this was like, you can never mimic someone that's that great. You can't. No, you can't. It's a limit to computers, limit to robots and stuff like that, especially when real creativity. And that's what, and what, what were we talking about? I forgot what episode it was. I told you, the way, to, the way to outpace AI, or it's not even outpace, it's just like, I just said it, I said it on the last episode, like human creativity is gold. Like, you, you're, you can't beat that. They could create all these artificial things, but human creativity, human thought process, human, like, that you can't so, emulate that. So tech companies are smart, and there's a lot of tech companies in the music industry, like YouTube Music and a couple others. Suppose you just start decoupling an artist. I mean by that is taking their teams away, getting writers. Maybe they get somebody who wrote on Cobbler Carter. You start doing things like that. How does that affect the landscape? It's just, okay, you just got to adapt, but still, but still, even with that, you cannot emulate human creativity. Like if somebody's a great artist that's been doing this for 30 years, just because some new AI tool came out, that doesn't mean that they're gonna get replaced. No, like, you know, you have to be, not, like you have to be, like Benny the Butcher said it on um, uh, How to Rap, like, like you gotta, first you gotta be nice with it. Like he starts off the song, like first you gotta be nice with it. Like it's not no, like you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, this is not no computer generated rap. Hold on. Something he said before, before we went to, a couple weeks ago, off camera. He said, you don't have to be nice. He was saying somebody like Ice Spice, who could just get buzz off of like social media marketing, personality type stuff like that. She's one of the top artists right now. So do you have to be nice? Yeah, I mean, she, nice? no, don't get it twisted. She's talented. Ice Spice is talented. But what the problem is, is that you could get, this is why I think we were just talking about it. Would you rather the thing the thing that artists, especially new artists coming out, you really have to ask yourself this question: Do you just want to be hot, or do you want to be a slow burner? So you know what I'm saying. That's a real question. She kind of she kind of I know I think she said she was making music for like a year or so, and then she got hot with that song Munch. That's fast. You know what I'm saying. And then she rose to stardom so fast. Now you getting put in a light where. You kind of got to deliver for rap fans. We're talking about like real rap fans. You can go do your thing doing uh, partnerships, but we're talking about real rap. People got to remember, you get back the music, the music 
is the entry to everything else. Mm -hmm. Even a perfect example is Kanye. You mean? It, at, the, at the essence, he goes into fashion, everything, but he still goes back to the music because that's what gave him the pathway into everything else. You got it. It, it starts with the music. It's not, you got to be nice. You got to be nice. If you want the longevity, if you want the longevity, you got to be nice. Like, you got to be nice. It, it, all that other gimmicky social media stuff, yeah, it'll, it'll have you in a thing for a long time. A perfect example is Little Pump. I don't even want to. I don't even want to give artists. I'm, I'm not trying to give no pub like that. But J Cole said it on 1985. A couple years from now, you're gonna be on uh, them, them um, hip hop uh, reunion hip -hop. joints. You know what I'm saying? He said it because because you can't you can't outpace and you can't outlast these people that really dedicated their life to perfecting the craft. Okay, let's take it away from like our generation. Let's say the labels like our we messed up the world last year with the. Generative like AI tool. Let's try to do something like um, lo-fi music, right? We go on YouTube and put like background music. Let's like make an artist like that that targets kids who are currently like maybe ten years old or something, like little kids, and get them kind of brainwashed a little bit to think that that's an artist. That's what an artist is. Versus getting attached to a cultural person like a Beyonce or someone that they probably listen to like Ice Spice. You see what I'm saying? Like, how does can it, AI trick? Younger folks, and I'll like, ask this: this I'll, How an, an artist should sound and be? I'll ask this question: Who dictates? Who dictates music and uh, the acceptance of music? Labels or the artists? Especially in twenty twenty four. I still think the labels do. How? They're the ones who are saying listen to these people. How? You're choosing to go listen to them, not the label. So you're letting the label market to you and tell you who to go listen to. It's like it's they their rosters are so full. They're gonna find somebody that attracts them. To them. It's definitely but, a, it's definitely the artist. It can't it, it, like it's it's the like you're talking okay. For who what name a major art name a major a label artist that that uh, that uh, people uh, that they're they're telling and pushing you to go listen to. Taylor Swift. You don't you don't think that they're pushing that she's yeah that she's on? Who's what label she on? What label she's on? Well, yeah, what label she's on? <coughs> I think she's on Republic. But we could check. See, nobody knows. But you know Taylor Swift. But they push Taylor Swift on us. I mean, she just hit the billionaire yesterday, right? I mean, Taylor Swift is great. I like Taylor Swift. She's not bad. Um, I think the reason why they're pushing her, to be frank, is because what happened with her, what happened with her deal situation and her master situation. Um, so they're just trying to from a business perspective and a labels perspective, they're just trying to recoup that money that she was owed um, for her masters being sold without her even knowing. And the crazy thing about it, I think even Steve South said it on his interview with Shannon Sharp. Her father supposedly, I don't know how true this is, but this is what they were saying. Her <laughs> father owned a part of that company that bought the masters. So the fact that her father knew that her masters was being sold and didn't tell her, that's crazy. You get what I'm saying? So. I guess they're just, I guess so she learned the business, the ins and out of it, and now she's just, that's why she released, re-released everything, saying Taylor's version, because she didn't own the rights to her music. I think that's what artists need to start thinking about, instead of trying to get behind these major labels. Let's separate it. I think we choose cultural people of relevance, like okay. uh, Brent Fias, but I think the labels choose who's in the top 10, top 20. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's a good so way to look at it. The people who are really getting pushed out. That's that's a good way to look at it, because there's definitely a lot of great. So if they decide, hey, we're gonna put in our top twenty or top ten an AI artist to compete with Beyonce's album that just dropped, like how does that look in five years? Because I think that's gonna be a really serious conversation. But there's no, but there's no AI. Like, what name a good AI AI artist? No, you're saying they can make one. They can make one. They can produce one. N name who? Like how? How? If you started out young, that's what companies you try to start out young and kind of groom you into liking it, and, but. Like you said, like like you said, it's a cultural relevance thing. So if it's not a, it's not a culture that ARs can't come and do a commercial and you know, meet, do creative things that artists could do. They can't do that. That's what I'm saying. It's just, it's just background music. Exactly. They can't push that for real. Even artists died. They could post an AI version of their music. Yes, and they will. But they already they already have that following they because will. they were actual person first. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like yeah, like I I don't I, like I said. Human creativity, if you want to be AI, 
Human creativity is exponential. You your human creativity has to be exponential. Has to be exponential. And um, it is, like, especially in, you know, black culture. You know, I'll keep it real. Like, that's, that's one of America's best exports. That's, that's a fact. That's one of America's best exports is black culture. You're just in an Uber driving to trap Indian beats because that's a, a hip hop influence. You feel me? We got Indi- people in India rapping in Indian over, over trap beats. Where do you think they learned that from? That was the experience, though. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's dope. And the music was dope. I mean, I wish I understood what he was saying, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's, that, that's, that's the real relevance that's going to push everything. All that AI stuff, like, yeah, it's cool. They'll attempt it. But once they realize it's not going to make money in the long run, because at the end of the day, that's what these companies want. They want to make money. Um, and once they realize that, okay, it's a cool gimmick, but we're talking about longevity, no. Like, that's not going to make money. Is Beyonce independent or she, who's she signed to? She's not, I don't think she's independent. She's not. I don't think she's independent. Colombian? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's like a real good transition. Gamma, I want to talk about Gamma. We talked about Usher in episode three, right? Correct. So we didn't talk about his label. <laughs> or actually, shout out to Larry Johnson. Is, he's saying it's not a label. This is like the new medium of how to push, push artists. artists. So it's a creative agency. They have equity and funding. So again, we're tech venture entertainment. Why? Because this is happening in the in, ecosystem. Yeah, right now. Right? And this is like, I kind of tell you guys off camera how I would operate my music stuff. This is very similar to how Larry Johnson is doing it. Um, mm. So Gamma has Usher. So that's why he was excited. I'm like, what's about Gamma? Okay. <laughs> has Usher, Rick Ross, which is great. And I was trying to figure out why did he go after established acts, right? Instead of trying to maybe convince like Brent Fias. I know he turned down a couple deals. Mm-hmm. How about I get someone who's emerging? He went and opted for an established act. And when we talked about Usher in episode three, we talked about that, him coming back out and it took four or five years. I'm like, you know what? Usher's established, but he's not. He's just uh, has a new energy around him, mm-hmm. right? New fan fresh, base. Fresh, fresh. He's active and probably had a new fan base as well. Because an, an emerging artist in five years would not be able to do the Super Bowl like Usher just did. Mm-hmm. So from the perspective of him starting and launching something new, that was genius. And now he can add an emerging artist now too. But what do you think about the emergence of folks saying this is not a label, the way they're going about operating, getting funding, coming from his background, I think he was at Apple, like this new medium of music. And I'm not even talking about Web3 stuff too, because I think he's also saying that they're going to dive into Web3. That would make they're gonna sense. They're going to dive into these. It's not the standard music rollout. Of mm-hmm. An artist comes out like Tyler with water, mm-hmm. came out with a record, let it run, then I do an album, then I'm gonna do a tour, I'm gonna drop merch. They're so, I keep saying this is so played out, it's so refreshing to see someone say, no, this is how it's gonna course. work for the next 10 years. I mean, but chill though, cause Tyler, shout out to Tyler, her album is fire, water is fire. It was, it was, you, gotta, <laughs> you gotta chill with that. You gotta chill, Tyler's joint was fire, and her, her, her shit was fire. Answer your question, there's two things. One, the reason why you don't want to probably come out and just say your label because you're boxing yourself in. And now with technology and integrating with different for, different technologies, platforms. you can different platforms, you probably get more, you'll be more attractive to an investor if you come out and brand yourself. I don't want to say you you uh, let me let me rephrase this. You will limit yourself in funding and limit yourself in growth if you say and just come out and say I'm a music label. Because there's going to be, because with all these emerging technologies, there's going to be so many integration pathways that you could get your music out that you don't have to necessarily be a label. The labels are going to have to adapt. That's why I asked at the beginning, who's, who's really, who makes the culture represent? Is it the label or is it the artist? Second, to answer your question about the Usher thing, the biggest thing and the biggest, um, to, for me, this is my opinion, the biggest thing as an artist that you need to have to have, um, you know, that long staying power is catalog. Usher has a catalog. So when you're dealing with an emerging artist, they're still building that catalog. And your catalog is like your most valuable asset. You know, that's why people be like, you keep making music, keep dropping. That's why I fuck with Russ's idea of like dropping music every week, every, because at the end of the day, you're building up your asset portfolio, which is your catalog of music. And now if it's really good and something hits, like you have like a big record, people are gonna go back into your catalog and be like, oh, wow, this other shit was actually fire too. Then and that's how you monetize the music. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 
But it is a fire idea to have a whole new approach because the, like you said, the whole system is outdated. It's, it's you know, prehistoric. So the whole new approach is to say it's an agency and not a label. That's what we need more of in industry, more creativity, more outside the box thinking. It's, it's, I also like it because it adds more, especially people of color, to think about if he kind of blows up Gamma, Steve Stout's the United Masters, it's like setting a precedent. Also, he bought uh, Vidya, which is another distro. It's like distro kid. It's Who, like, the United Masters? Uh, no. no, Gamma. Oh, Gamma did? Okay. Yeah, they purchased it. So that's, hmm. I think, going to be the distribution model. Exactly. See, it, the way it, he's like stacking this up, like Lego pieces, is kind of crazy. That's the integration. That's the integration part we're talking about. That's now, and we, we was even talking about off camera. Everybody's really, you know, typically how the, how the standard is, is like everybody releases on a Friday, you know, things like that. We remember you when CDs was out in the thing, we used to drop on Tuesdays or we used to drop on different days. So now with this independent wave and this independent artist is emerging or independent labels or independent businesses, I should say, um, that's not major, necessarily backed by a major label. Um, you can have creative releases that can attract the fan base. Like I think we were saying, imagine if somebody dropped on a Sunday, had like 300, 400 downloads, and then now they're charting. You're gonna go to the thing and be like, "Yo, who's this? How the hell did they? How the hell did they drop on a Sunday and get all this traction?" So that's I think we gotta be, and that what is that goes back to, human creativity superseding the AI bull. I don't I don't want to say bull crap. It's not bullshit. <laughs> AI is definitely a it's really a great tool. It's definitely a really great tool. But when it comes to like making music and stuff like that, that's more creativity than it is like computer generated. And unfortunately for our audience, and I guess fortunately, we're going to keep talking about AI because uh, it's a trillion dollar business. It's not a, yeah, it's a trillion, trillion, do, a trillion, trillion dollar trillion, business, not billion. He said a trillion, trillion dollar business and we have by 2030. And 2030 is like yeah. five years away. And we haven't uh, dived into it too much yet in terms of all the different branches of AI, but we will in a coming episode. It's just a lot to unpack. Yeah, music and tech, man, it's, it's, uh, it's going. It's going. It's going. I like it personally. I mean, I like, I like, I like how I like to, um, honestly, you know what I think with the emergence of AI, I think it's going to force, it's going to force people to be more creative. So all those artists that they was talking about plants, they would be like, oh, this art is a plant. It's going to probably eliminate those type of artists because you got to actually be creative now. Like, nah, like how are you creative in your rollout? How are you creative in your music? Who's your producer? You don't, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that, it forces you to be creative. It forces you to figure out a different way of how can I get out into the audience? How can I uh, catch a listener's ear? Opposed to the major labels just telling me, oh, this person is hot, I should go listen to them. Nah, it don't work that way. Unrelated, you had a question about emerging artists and established artists dropping music in the same time frame. Do you want to jump into that a little bit? Yeah, we can. Um, that's actually a perfect segue. So how do you compete, or I guess, or be creative in what major label drops? So if a major, if somebody's big, for example, Beyonce, she dropped on 329. So there's like a new emerging artist. Well, give the context. Because, okay. Because back in the day, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's right. He's right. I have to give the context about it. Back in the day, in the 90s and early 2000s, artists like Jay-Z, Lauryn Hill, DMX um, would all drop on the same day. Outcast. And Outcast would all drop on the same day. How come nobody does that anymore? People would be like, oh, you got to move off my release date. It was not even a competition thing. Everybody would go listen to all of those artists. So how come that's not like what's the, how come that's not a thing anymore? Like how come Kanye, Drake, Kendrick, Cole all can't drop on the same day? Especially in the streaming era, because back in the day, hold on one second, because back in the day I can understand not not stepping on people's release date because we had to physically go spend money and physically go to somewhere to buy the CD. Now everything is digital. All I got to do is go on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, um, all these different streaming platforms, and click play. So why can't all these big artists drop on the same day? But that serves the unknown artists because now if you put, if I drop on the same day as Beyonce, I'm in the same category as Beyonce, or like same area as Beyonce. Because people are going to see Beyonce, they're going to see my song. Feel me? But back in the day, they have to actually go and spend the money. So that's what they move away from that. But now everything is digital. Oh, I could drop the same. It probably would behoove them because 
like I said, in the same, they're in the same day, same category, same area. I'm right there. I'm going to just stream that next to on title. I don't know how it is on, on Spotify and other platforms. On title, everybody drops the same, you know, the same day, same time. You get to see, um, you, you kind of, um, for he's speaking from a title, I, I, I use Apple Music. I mean, I like title too, because um, I use Apple Music. So on Apple Music, when an artist drops, especially like a big name artist, and it's like best, and it's like new albums, it's going to have all the new albums that came out that same day as well too. Like, yes, you probably can get placement, but like he's saying, you can still discover somebody else because all that traffic that Beyonce created on that day is going to be in that ecosystem of like, oh, who else dropped? Like after you listen to her, even though her album was really long, it was 27 songs, but it's like, okay, who else dropped? Who else music can I, can I listen to? Who else can I discover? So from a marketing aspect, depending on how the rollout is, you can kind of position yourself next to that big artist and maybe get discovered. It's, it's still, it's still, a, it's still a, uh, up to the listener, per se. I think I'm on the other side. Of I, I don't think, if you're emerging, I don't think it should drop the same day as an established artist. Why not? I think it takes away from your, your, your entire rollout. Because it's like, a, it's a build up to that day and then there's like a post-launch activities. And that post-launch, if you launch after Beyonce, they're talking about Beyonce. You know, like, let's take a small artist. Let's do somebody else. Who's a mid-level artist you can think of? Anybody. Like, mid-level. Dochi? Yeah, Dochi. I would say Dochi. Okay, let's do Summer Walker. Like, okay, Summer Drop, maybe. Like, depending on how much traction you have as an emerging artist. But still, like, if this is, like, a, she rolled out a music video that went kind of viral. If she had a feature on it, you're... you're you're gonna go ghost, like they're gonna go mess with that, not with your stuff. Like it kind of becomes your day online, like your digital uh, playground for the next two weeks because no one's dropped. Maybe it's a dead season. Uh, maybe artists are coming out in a couple of weeks, and you kind of have the calendar. You can say, all right, I'm gonna come here. I can get a little bit of traction before that. And also, maybe you uh, garner attention from from bigger artists because you dropped before them. I don't know. I don't think dropping on the same day like benefits you. Maybe. Again, I think it depends where you're at. Like, if you know you can stream Yeah, I don't well, think Summer Walker should you, be down. But somebody, un, like, un, I never heard of you before. But now I see your album because I'm here, I'm looking at a Beyonce album. But how prone is, because you like music a lot, but someone who's like a casual listener who likes that, who likes that particular artist, are they going to click on somebody else now? I don't know. That's, I mean, it's, to me, but, probability to, to me, it goes back to this. Like, yeah, I can see, I see where you're coming from, but it goes back to this. Okay, cool. You remember those artists? They're behind the machine. Like they, they, you know what I'm saying? They're they're gonna regardless of whatever happens, they're good. But the up and coming artists, this is gonna give you more incentive to work your record, because this is I think Tyler the Creator said this. There was like some some thing they said online. People post their uh, album like once and think like, oh yeah, I did it. I post my album. No, like we need to get back to the days where, especially if you're an independent artist, you need to work your record. Like. You need, people need to get tired of like, yo, why does this dude keep sending me this shit? Like, that's good marketing though. That's what people don't realize. Good marketing is like, yo, get out of my face. So that's why I kind of lean on the other side and say, no, you go, okay, yeah, you dropped on the same day as a big artist, but you got to work your record. People need to get back to working their record and um, being a slow, and, and being accepting of being a slow burner. Like, People, everybody wants to get viral and be hot. But like I said, I said it a little bit earlier in this episode. As an artist, you have to ask yourself, do you want to be viral or do you want to be, do you want to have longevity? Because everybody's in the game of being viral. But the real game is that taking that 15 minutes and stretching it as far as you can. That's, that's the real game. How do you do that? Look at the greats that's done it. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to, you have to understand that. Like, take that 15 minutes that you got, and how do I extend it? But artists are just like, oh, I'm gonna go on TikTok, upload this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go viral. Okay, cool. You went viral. You got a million, two million yeah. views, but nobody cares because the craft itself. At the end of the day, it just goes back to this: what makes people great? It's not the views. It's not all of that. It's the content and the craft. Like with the, the the perfection of your craft, that's what makes the shit great, not the numbers. And the business, like Don Music said, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, learning the business. Yeah. You gotta, you ha you have people have to get back to the craft. 